Man, I ain't gonna lie, it, it feels good to be out the house around people again. You know, this is this is New York City. Like this is what we do. We we, we get out, we fellowship, we go to these clubs, we go to these studios, and um, you know, we all a part part of the hip hop community and this is this is what we do. We like to feel the vibe, we like to feel the music. And uh, I want to welcome everybody here. This is a special listening session. We also got a Q&A with my man Brutini, Brooklyn. I see you got the whole fam in here. Uh, shout out to everybody that came out to represent. And we're going to have some, some fun tonight. The project is called Drippin' Fetamine. Correct? Like man, that title is crazy. Before we get into the, to the music, Let's just break down that, that title, Drippin' Fetamine. Drippin' Fetamine, it's a... Drippin' Fetamine is basically an infatuation with fashion, but we all thrive for, for excellence. So we accomplish certain things and we give ourselves trophies. And that's why fashion is a palette, but now we have to understand that we gotta bring it back to the culture and be black owned. So now we bring in the brand Drippin' Fetamine. It's gonna remind you of all the brands that you love, but here's something that's made for the brother man. There we go, and, 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 and no boosting, no boosting. We gotta, we gotta pay and support these companies. So let's get into some of the music before we get into the talk. Um, I'm gonna introduce a few of the records. Do you wanna start? You wanna start with it? Let's start with a song instead of the skit. You wanna start with the skit? We can start with the visual first. Okay, let's start with the visual. That's even better. I'll let you uh, set it up as far as what we're gonna see. All right. Basically, this is a dichotomy of what Brooklyn is like. And instead of calling it Brooklyn, I call it Ghetto Town. And Kaji, me and Kaji basically work on this along with DJ O, and we elaborating on what it's like a day in Ghetto Town, which is the jungle. So we got to navigate and figure it out. Push your dreams on the road, jump the road, keep going road. I ain't no slave, bend and back, like a fossil. Dig up the facts, it's a hell and back, it's an artifact, seeking this heaven so. BK, give it up for the for the video, very town. Wow, man, Brooklyn, um, when it comes to, when it comes to hip hop, Brooklyn just has uh, one of the most beautiful uh, just the lineage of the Brooklyn MC, male and female, um, Big Daddy Kane, Jay Z, Biggie, Kim, Foxy, Fab, Mano, so many. Rest in peace, Pop Smoke, Fabio doing this thing right now. It's it's, it's so many greats. Uh, Shine, we can't forget about him. When you think about just the lineage of Brooklyn MCs and you coming up as the next one up to the plate, like, you know, what type of inspiration does it have for the people? What type of inspiration do the people that came before you, what does that give you? And what are you bringing to the table as the new generation of Brooklyn MC? Well, basically, the whole idea is to bring a vibe. Because everything now is, nowadays is about energy, is about vibes. And I feel like with hip hop, it's nothing new under the sun. So you have to find a, a new, unique and innovative way to bring your energy to the game. So the sound to me is more important than what's being really said. Because if you feel the vibe, then you could just go into your own space. Because the whole point of music is to get away from the issues and the problems. Even, I'm you have the title of the video, it's called Ghetto Town. What was it like? First of all, you gotta break down what part of Brooklyn, because Brooklyn, you gotta be very, very specific when um, somebody asks you what part of Brooklyn you from. You know, they's like, nah, you ain't from there, this, that, and the third. So tell us what part of Brooklyn you're from and what was it like growing up there? Well, first things first, everybody know nowadays, 
When somebody asks you what part of Brooklyn you from, it's staticky. You, you are you already afraid to be like, damn, why he asking me that? But at the end of the day, I'm from Flatbush, and, and I'm gonna let the energy be known. Like, I'm from Flatbush, what's up? I'm on deck, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? What was it like growing, growing up in Flatbush, man? I, I, I remember, man, coming up in like the 90s, um, going to Brooklyn, and you know, you gotta be very, very on point getting off the train, man, especially coming from other boroughs, it was a little crazy. What was it like for you? First things first, to be outside is treacherous, that's one. And there's so much, so much elements and so much influences on the streets, you gotta understand, you choose a side, it comes with consequences. But at the same time, you gotta be able to control the environment and understand who's who and how each person could be utilized. Because don't get it twisted, the hood can show you 20 different type of people, we all the same, because we all just want to get out, be entrapment. But it's figuring out what's for me and who's who and staying away from trouble. In the video, you, you show um, lions and just a lot of uh, people or animals, I should say, we, we should, we were seeing in the jungle. Is that how you feel like sometimes when you was coming up that you was just like in the concrete jungle and it would just get too crazy? That's one. And two is being able to identify who, which animal are you in the jungle. Because you could either be the lion or you could be the weasel. So you have to understand which character is you. And we all have spirit animals that we feel like we feed into. So we already viewed as animals. So if that's the case, why not be the lion king, the ruler of the jungle? How did you get into music? Like, what Was that something that was around your, your family when you was coming up? When did you dive into it and say, I wanna really take music seriously? Well, music always been a part of my growing up from what I can understand. It's even to the point where one of my uncles used to ask me, why does everybody listen to Jay-Z? And hey, we not gonna read, but we gonna listen to music. And there's parables in certain songs and and if it, if it catches to you, you're going to go with it. But music, it's been a part of me, but I was really influenced like a year ago by my peers to like get into it because I would always give opinions and ideas and feedback. And they're like, yo, why do you never try to record? Like, you want to tell people what to do. You try and see how it is. And we've been working and I'm not going to lie. There's been trash records and we got some solid records. But I've been working since like December 2018 going to 2019 really. What was it like for you the first time you got into that booth and you know you had to count bars and be on the time and everything? To be honest, Benji Benji and already could ask you. The first time I recorded was in a in a bedroom and honestly the beat came on. I always know what a hook is. The hook has to be the catchy part of the song. So I started with the hook and from there I was just flowing and whatever words came to it, I went with that. We would go back, replace the word fix this right here, but to be honest with you, once I laid the hook, and the hook was something that I was just walking around pacing in this house, and it just came to my head, like, people be acting shady. And I was going through something in my text, and I'm like, damn, people shady. And I just had the space to record in this room that night, and the rest was history, I ain't gonna lie. Um, I wanna talk about the, the, the skit first, um, the, the one of one. Um, talk about finances. You know, it paints a, a bleak outlook for a lot of people that uh, most people won't make it to that to that one percent. I guess that's why they call it the one percent. Uh, where did where did you find that skit, and how are you learning? You know, coming into the music business where we just saw Kanye West, one of our most successful MCs, billionaire certified obviously a legend with the music he's made as well we saw him go on a tremendous tremendous you call it rant tirade whatever he was upset about his contract now this is somebody who's a veteran in the game what are some of the steps that you are taking to uh just ensure that you first of all are financially uh literate because that, that's that's a major major issue especially in the black community and also um just learning about the business of the music industry 
Well, first things first, it's always being a student of the game. And noticing certain individuals like Master P, even uh, Sir, Sir Rap-A-Lot, um, Jay Prince, the Jay-Z's, even Prince himself. Like, the fact that he didn't do a record with Nas because he didn't own his master, it just shows the element of intellectual property. And we all are entitled to that, but how much do we leverage or compromise with what we're worth? Because we see a lot of times artists go give up their catalog and when it's time to buy it back, they didn't make enough money to buy it back, but they're watching these companies make money off their backs. So me, me seeing that and talking with my adversaries, it makes no sense to like just bow out early just because we offer hype and we might be struggling with the pockets, but it doesn't make sense to go compromise the whole catalog when we know that over time it will build up. We just gotta put the finances into it accordingly and understand how to save and trade and do certain elements outside of the music. Cause really with music, you can't just say, oh, I'm gonna get rich off of music. No, you have to have other incomes and other things to boost that because it's, it's a, another business model. You can't, you can't take something from something and think, is gonna make profit overnight. You have to build it up and give yourself that room to build. How much of a uh, of an eye opener was it for you when you when you saw Kanye, somebody who's a veteran in the game, and you know you this your first year, like really into it? How much of an eye opener was that? Not much of an eye opener, because again, when you hear about guys like Mark Zuckerberg in their college room coming up with ideas and they're making billions. And you look at that model, he didn't have to sacrifice much to get that space to where he's buying other companies. So again, with Kanye ranting, it's more so understanding what your worth is. And you may not have it right now, but hold on to it because like a stock is gonna blow up. It goes up and down. So it's always betting on yourself and believing that you're gonna figure out a way because if you're looking for somebody else to help you, to put you in position, it's never gonna benefit you. That's just, you negotiate, but you don't get what you deserve. It's what you negotiate. So at the end of the day with Kanye's situation, he made those decisions, you gotta live with it. And you got you got a team too, right? You got like a, almost like a, a left arm and, and, and a right arm of, of, a, of a team. Uh, break that down for me. Well, we got the OGs, Shabazz brothers, they quarterback in the whole situation. And then you got Tommy in business, and you got Drip Thomas. And those elements, we got two different vibes, but we all come together to be one conglomerate. At the end of the day, it may sound selfish, but everybody's gonna look out for their best interests. But you just gotta find like-minded people that's willing to sacrifice the same as you and build together so that we can build this empire, because we all kings at the end of the day. Big time, and, who, and who's doing the beats? These sound like uh, you done spent the whole crazy budget on these beats, man, and, and calling the industry for some Grammy Award winners or something like that. The illest, the illest thing about the, the producer, JaVinci sent me him last year off of YouTube. I did one joint, everybody said that's the one. I'm like, no way. So I hit him up, like, send me beats. He sent 100 beats. We probably did 75 songs and we cut it down to 30. So, 19 year old kid from Germany, I never met him a day in my life. He FaceTimed a couple of times, but he just likes my energy. And it's so weird that I'll have a conversation with one of my, my friends, and like two days later, he sends me a beat title off of one of the words that stuck to the conversation. I'm like, yo, what's up with this? Is he, is he on our time, man? And from then, we just been building. And really, to be honest with you, I don't know how he do it, I don't know how we sync, but it just shows you how universal music is. To, to meet somebody that speaks a different language, never met him, but we can vibe. Like when we don't paint on the wall, it looks like a, a Basquiat piece. You know, some of the, the guys that came before you, the Canes, Biggie, Jay-Z, of course, we know them for going for the crown, the king of New York. Is that something that's in your sights? Some a, a goal of yours, you want to be known as the king of NY? Yeah. That's 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 my new. That's not the goal, because again, who, the crown. That's competing. We don't compete. The keys to collaborate. So if you want to join, what we doing? Let's build. I don't. We can all wear the crown each different day. Like it don't. It don't even matter. Like we know what's up. How did uh, the crew come together? Tell me about 
you know, bringing the guys that, that you rhyme with together? I saw the car G. I know majority of them for like at least 10 plus. And to even go to the skits, you could ask Jose. We found that little little piece in college and that used to help us get through exams. So we would listen to that and then go study. Cause it was just a reminder like, serve your purpose here while you're here. Make, make the best of it. And that those skits that we got, that we cut up on a project, those are like little reminders. Yeah, we could get caught up with all the fashion and all the goofy stuff, but sometimes you need to lock in and understand yourself. What's the key to keeping everybody together for 10 years plus? Cause you know, we always say about, oh, that's the family. And then, you know, two weeks later they fall out or whatever. But, you know, um, especially in the in, in hip hop game too, we done seen some nasty falling outs, but how do you keep your team strong and alive for over a decade? Well, one thing is first, there's a lot of respect. It's mutual, all like-minded as, as Tom went on. Let's say like one of my friends, we was in the schoolyard and you know, it was a situation and for some reason, we was on the same side. So he's like, all right, we cool. We understand each other. We defending each other without even asking. So that's one thing about the brotherhood. Like, yeah, we gonna get into to spats, but we understand there's a level of respect. And as a general manager, like so I'm talking about overall, you have to understand each role. And if you're gonna put somebody in a position, put him in a position to win. So how can he look bad if you always put him in a position to win and he's gonna excel? Cause he knows that he's good at this. No doubt. This guy got all the right answers, man. He got all the, it's like he been there before. It's like this guy's came up with Kane and all of them, man. He, he got a lot of wisdom to you, which, which is great. Cause he is. There's a lot, we share it. Iron sharpens iron. Understand one model we got, we don't disrespect each other when it comes to women. Like, yeah, you can shit bitches, but not my wife. So we understand, we don't let little things like that get in the way because that messes up the synergy. So we're not gonna fight over money, we're not gonna fight over women. So what are we fighting over for? Let's collaborate. And we all have been able to sharpen each other from whether it's making music to designing clothing and just inspiring each other, being that inspiration because that's our duty to this earth.